Hello everyone, I have here the LEGO Star Wars Inquisitor Transport Scythe Set. Bought this for $100 US and built it live over on my Twitch channel. This set comes with four minifigures and I'll show you those up close later in the video. This has 924 pieces in total. And uh, first I just want to give you a quick we'll spin around the whole thing like I usually do so you can get a general idea of what it looks like, at least on first impression. First impression is very positive, at least to my eyes, because there's some really good consistency here with the ratio of tiled to studded surfaces. Gaps are rather small and it's just so consistent. Uh, it's fit and finish, I think, is top notch. Like, like, look at this. Look at, look at where all these, these different angled panels come together. You've got one angle up here, which is actually 90 degrees off from this inside one that you see right there. But then this panel is done at a, at a different angle. You got just a straight line going down the middle. You look at it from here. That's a lot of angles. And yet it all comes together really, really well. Doesn't waste too many pieces also to accomplish that, which is a really good trick. I think I'm very impressed by the, the design work here. It is a little bit finicky to put together initially. You just have to be a little bit careful with it. Uh, it's not like a, a five plus or six plus set, you know, just slightly advanced, only slightly. It looks like I should push this down just a little bit. It's not quite in its in its little spot in there. That's just my mistake. I didn't get it perfectly lined up in on the final assembly. But this also has here in, in the middle of the, the the jaws here, ability for this top bit to open up. And then this comes down to represent the front ramp. Now that's not the most useful thing because it only has anti-studs on it, but that's where figures would be posed, you know, walking down from the front. This uses a Speed Champion style of canopy there, which is a unique printed piece. It's in the trans transparent red color, but has a unique print to it. It's it's six wide, but it's used for the eight wide Speed Champions themselves. Um, I'll show you exactly how the uh, the, the wings work in just a second, but I first wanted to finish just kind of taking you around the thing all in all. Uh, yeah, just really nice, nice finish on it. It does use spring loaded shooters. So you can see one here and one's under the opposite wing that comes with red bolts to go with those engines on the back. Some little suggestions of thrusters here as well. This does use some stickers. Some of them are relatively subtle, you know, because it's like mostly black against black and then dark gray against black. But this is a nice face here, which also has its own unique angle and is mostly tiled over. To get those wings or foils down, you just simply angle them. Just They just go into place. They naturally rest there. Um, there's, no, there's no ratcheting mechanism or anything. So they just go up to where they're supposed to be. They go down to the correct angle so much has been learned since the original Kylo Ren's uh, shuttle that had so many things wrong with it. This has so many things right with it. It actually has skids underneath. That's something I wasn't uh, initially expecting. Little landing skids. Uh, I thought it was just going to rest directly on the ground, maybe with some little some little stumps. But uh, you know, that's nice to see. They do not retract though, but they do look good uh, uh, when it's when it's on the ground, down to the ground. But this is just so simple and easy to get to. And then for accessing the interior, there are several things you can do. I already showed you this here on the front, right? To basically simulate what happens in universe. But us huge figures are not going to be really act interacting with that all that much with the minifigures. However, you can open up the canopy right here. This is not the easiest thing to do to open up the canopy. That's not, it doesn't need to be. You can open up just that, but you can also open up all of this super easy. You see part of the back opens up there as well. And then this opens up and this opens up. So it is <laughs> very convenient to get to the interior of the thing, whether the wings are up or down, all that opens up and lets you play around with the inside. That interior in turn is rather voluminous for the size of the whole thing. They've done a good job of preserving interior space that's usable. Just big open flat space. You can put more seats there. It doesn't come with more seats, but you can add more seats or you can just sit uh, figures down, you know, directly on the studded surfaces. Right now it's set up to have three figures in here because only three inquisitors are included, but they also have these jumpers used back here to allow you to place their lightsaber and lightsaber blades in there. So all their accessories can be 
held, but you can easily, like I said, put more figures in there. This just uses a couple of stickers on the side for the consoles there. It's the exact same thing on either side. I actually like the designs of those stickers. They're, they look very useful to me, uh, usable for different things. The pilot seat is done a little bit differently. You know, it's made a little bit fancy. Uh, the piloting console area is not the most accessible, not the most believable because it's way up high. You know, there, it would have been nice to have something down low, but instead that's where the, the ramp space is. So, yeah, <laughs> see I'm reaching in from, from the front there. So again, you're really not going to use that front ramp. It is mostly for display purposes. I'm glad that it, that it is there. But yeah, that could have been slightly better, but I'm really, really nitpicking at that point. Ultimately, the most important thing to me is that you can put figures in this shuttle. All too frequently, LEGO has done shuttles that can't hold figures very much or it can't hold much cargo. And they've actually done a good job here. I also want to confirm that it is not at all difficult or frustrating to close everything back up. It all just sits in place, just gravity. Nothing needs to be clipped together, like opening this up. You don't have to worry about lining things up. It just fits easily, simply. And I really like that. It just feels good. Put it into its flight position, bring these up. You know, it's a very low hassle design. And notice, as I look around this, I'm not seeing lots of yellow and red and green and other dark tan interior stuff. I see a little bit of gray in there. I see a little bit of gray there. I'm not seeing, oh, there's a little bit of dark tan. I could just barely see it, <laughs> but it's not, it's not invasive. It's not intrusive. It doesn't really, it doesn't bug me. You know, this is mostly black with a little bit of, a little bit of gray and that important red canopy section, which honestly isn't the best design, the best graphic design for it. But I think the shape works well. And I think that overall the design works out well enough for it. Uh, that it doesn't bother me. And looking at this from underneath, okay, now I see some colors that I don't want to see. But I had to turn this all the way upside down to get to that point. So if you want to hang this from a ceiling, it's not going to look great. But for most use, most of the time, and for standard display near eye level or below or slightly above, it's actually finished well. Here's exiled Obi-Wan on the left and Reva, the third sister on the right. Notice that Reva's head is not brown or reddish brown. It's the new dark, uh, dark nougat color, which is very, 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 very close to the old medium brown color. But yeah, it's just nice to have a little bit more variety specifically for skin tones there. Uh, hairpiece is relatively new hairpiece for Obi-Wan is also interesting has a big mold mark on the top of it but it has some really good sculpting I would say I wish that this poncho or half poncho would uh, fold down in the front a little bit I might need to try to intentionally get some folds in there it's one thing that's kind of a double-edged sword about uh, with the uh, the softer cloth material is that it is flowy but then at the same time if you want it to to stay in one position, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get it to stay. But overall, both of these figures, I think, look very good. Interestingly, we're getting some consistency now in North America, at least recently, with the semi-frosted finish for the lightsaber blades. Since they switched from the old polycarbonate material to the newer material, they've been going back and forth and back and forth. It's been super, super inconsistent. Uh, for the same part number being either crystal clear with a nice gloss finish or this partial uh, partial frosted finish i like this if they can just stay consistent i'll be happy with it looking at the back you know with this again with the soft material you can easily open that up take a look at the the print on the back and you also get this alternate face for obi-wan you do not get a alternate face for reva because well there's just not enough room for it to fit there this Grand Inquisitor live action version minifig looks very much, very, very much like the live action Grand Inquisitor. This is another solid, good figure. Also, I should mention that the, the return of the double-sided Inquisitor style hilt is a boon because those were super, super, getting super, super expensive on the aftermarket. The gray printing on there is actually pretty good. I think it has enough opacity, shows enough contrast, and there's a good level of detail in there. Nice, very fine printing on the upper armor piece there. Good sculpting as well. Obviously, you got the clip on the back for the hilt. 
nice fine printing on the back of the head here as well. And underneath, well, I can't see that enough. There you go. So it's, it's somewhat, uh, somewhat simple, especially the part that is always covered up by the cape. And the cape piece itself does use a single neck hole, which makes things nice and convenient. The fifth brother was, in my opinion, the most underutilized character in the Kenobi series, but the figure, well, so the character on the screen looked awesome, it sounded awesome, and I think this figure looks quite good also. However, I've really struggled with the face on this one. I, when I first built this, I was looking at the, the pigment, the skin tone there, because he's got, you know, like a, 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 basically most of his face, all the black is, is fabric part of his, his armor and his headgear, but his skin tone is that slightly bluish, whitish, pale zombie kind of color. And I couldn't tell at first, were they trying to make this white? Or were they trying to make it gray or what? Uh, ultimately, I, I believe that that is trying to be a light aqua. You know, Lego always pulls from their official palette. I believe that's trying to be light aqua, but it's just not entirely successful. Maybe it actually turns out for the better here because if it was full bright light aqua, if it, it was, if it was a good quality opaque print, it might look too colorful. I don't know. It's just, uh, it's very, it's very pale and, and, and muted for better or worse. Some people may actually prefer that. I, I just like to have consistency and I like Lego to give us the best quality stuff that they can since, since they can, and since we do pay a lot for these, but other than that, a, a wonderfully designed figure. Could he use some double uh, double molded legs though? I think uh, definitely could have benefited from that. Look at that print on the, the back too. Oh, there I am gonna complain about the, the print quality straightforward, straight up, cause that red needs more brightness. That red needs to stick out, needs to stand out. It needs to look like it's glowing a little bit to me. Uh, it's it's just not quite enough, but really, really awesome design work though. Finally, here are the other pieces and I did not have the main primary bolts in the spring-loaded shooters. They do fire off a little bit too easily when you handle the thing quite a bit. So total of three, one of them is a spare. These are the rest of the just normal spares. This is what the sticker sheet looked like. I like this. I like it a lot, a lot, 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 a lot, 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 lot. But what about the price and the value? For 2022, four minifigures is okay. They're pretty good minifigures. The size of this from the outside, it's not bad. For 2022, I don't think I can complain too much. I think it's one of the better deals that we've gotten in above $60 Lego Star Wars sets in quite some time, but certainly in the past couple of years. So yeah, I'm not too, I'm not too unhappy about that. And I, I, again, I'm willing to pay, you know, Lego <laughs> premium thing. It's always been a premium thing. It's always been expensive. I'm willing to pay pre premium prices for a really, really, really good product. To me, this feels, this whole experience and this value proposition here reminds me of the small, the scaled down Boba Fett Starship set, which was $50 US. It's small, but it's really, really good. So it feels good. It feels okay, at least, to pay maybe more than you might expect. Like I would, maybe two years ago, I would have asked for this to be like $80 for this, this amount of stuff here. But it feels okay to pay more than you, you expect for something that's unexpectedly good. And the design of this is excellent. It has great playability, it has great display value. It's super swishable. It's surprisingly light in weight. For the swishing, it's easy to get access to all this all this good stuff, all the interior and everything. The interior itself is nice and usable. So just everything here was really, really done well. And if it ever goes on sale, great. If it doesn't, I'm okay with that. I don't like things going up in price. I really don't. But at least if we can get really good products that are cool, that appeal to a wide variety of people, hey, great. You know, I consider this to be a win personally, especially for these these times in which we live right now where everything's getting crazy overpriced no nah. not bad not bad at all that's it for my thoughts though for now thank you very much for watching hope that you enjoyed this stick around for more reviews from me on this channel of course uh live builds over on my twitch channel bye for now